Hey guys, welcome back to Through the Screen. I'm Charlotte. I'm Emily. I'm Brittany. We hope you've been enjoying our episodes so far and liking, commenting, and sharing with your friends. If you've missed any of them, head on over to our channel and watch. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe while you're there. This week we'll be discussing a crucial topic. So we hope you'll follow us once again as we join together via Skype to bring you conversations through the screen. episode, we will be discussing the horrors of the leather, fur, and wool industries. We will also be bringing you updates on Taiji, discussing a heartwarming story of a pint-sized service dog with a big responsibility, reviewing an all-natural face mask, and finally discussing this week's episode of Dancing with the Stars. First up, the cruelties of the fashion industry. This episode we'll be discussing some major fashion trends and what exactly they are made out of. As someone who is always behind on fashion, I never seem to have the current trends in my wardrobe. But I do have some in my house. But more on that later. For my take on this heartbreaking and incredibly disturbing topic, I will present some general facts on the leather, fur, and wool industries. Upon first research, I once again was horrified at some of the images that came on my screen as information appeared for the fur and leather industries. For many years, I like, I, like others, believed these animals were going to die anyway, so why not use them for things like meat and clothing? People as far back as cavemen have done it. What makes this any different? The difference is the treatment of the animals before that time comes. Since most of these animals come from factory farms after they're no longer useful to the farm, they essentially are slaves to the human race, born to be food and clothing, treated as if they have no soul or feelings, then slaughtered in some of the most horrific ways, with zero painkillers. The global leather industry alone slaughters more than a billion animals. In the fur industry, that number skyrockets. A billion rabbits alone are killed for every year to be used in fur and clothing. But here's where you'll be shocked. These animals are also used to make fly fishing lures and trim for your important craft items. Now, another thing I found shocking is that these fur farms are mainly in countries like India and China, where, as we know, laws for animals are so unregulated and non-existent that these practices go on as normal everyday living to the people who do such work. Most of the research I have done states that even if the product says made in the U.S. or Italy, chances are the raw materials came from China or India. The wool industry, on the other hand, has a twist. While China and India are the leading exporters of the fur and leather markets, Australia is the largest wool-producing country. Australia accounts for about 30% of the world's production of wool, but China is the leader in buying wool in the market, making up 30% of all of Australia's exported wool, followed closely by Italy, Taiwan, the Republic of Korea, and France. So once again, we learn, like most things in this day and age, the almighty dollar speaks again. Making rules and regulations on such practices in our own country just encourage retailers and farmers to do what most have done. Leave the U.S. for the cheaper and less, reconstructed, re, and, and less restricted countries on our planet. Not only do we get people off our backs now, they, they will have a harder time shutting it down. They're, they're right, too. Truly, the only way to stop such practices is to make it impossible for the product to sell and make money which when we open it up to the larger scope of things, it becomes daunting to consider why these things exist in certain items to begin with. Fishing lures and craft items? Who knew? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the leather industry. And most people think of leather as coming from cow skin, but leather can be produced from a variety of animals, including cows, pigs, goats, sheep, alligators, ostriches, kangaroos, and even dogs and cats that are slaughtered for their meat in China. And the biggest problem with this is that we import our leather from China, so there's really no way of knowing whether your leather bag or jacket is from a cow or from a dog or a cat. 
And as Charlotte briefly mentioned with the fur industry, most leather comes from India and China, where animal wealth, welfare laws are non-existent or um, unenforced at best. And in India, cows are abused and beaten on their way to slaughter, even having chili peppers rubbed in their eyes to keep them moving and are often poisoned as well. Um, however, many animals uh, trans are transported in horrible, confined conditions and don't even make it to their destination. Um, even in the United States, cows and other animals endure the horrors of factory farming, such as extreme crowding, terrible care, um, castration, branding, and the, the removal of tails or horns, all without painkillers. And sometimes these animals are even skinned and dismembered while still conscious. Um, but besides being absolutely cruel to the animals, the leather industry is also really unfriendly to the environment. Um, the tanning practices that they use on the leather creates a mass pollution of toxins, and this process uses dangerous chemicals like mineral salts, uh, formaldehyde, coal tar derivatives, um, and the CDC even found that one of these production areas in Kentucky created an increase in leukemia in um, the surrounding population that was five times higher than the U.S. average for leukemia. Um, also, like Charlotte said, it's not just what's left over from the animal after the meat is taken, as many people think. Um, skins that are made into leather are very profitable. Um, they're about 10% of the cow's total value, making it the most profitable part of its body. So in reality, leather actually makes the meat industry more sustainable, not the other way around, which I think is probably the most shocking for most people. Um, but overall, I think the main thing is to be aware of uh, what you're wearing or using as an accessory and, you know, to find alternatives such as artificial leather or another material that wasn't produced in a way that is cruel to animals. And I think that, um, I think that's like the biggest thing is that I just think people are unaware. I know I was completely unaware because I totally thought the same, you know, people are eating these animals anyway is like, why not use the whole thing? And it's just not happening in the fur industry. The animals aren't even getting eaten. Um, the fur farming is the most prevalent in uh, European countries, with Denmark being the leading producer of fur. 63% of mink and 70% of fox fur all comes from Denmark. Um, other major producers include China, uh, the Netherlands, and the United States, which is just appalling. Um, but it's, fur is banned in Austria, Croatia, and the U.K., so I just, it still comes back to the fact too, with, with factory farming and things like that, we saw the same thing. The UK has the most, you know, animal friendly places again and again and again. Why is the United States not following suit? But 85% of fur, fur fashion comes from fur farms. Fur farms like factory farms are disgusting, deplorable. Um, they, the animals have nowhere to move. They're packing them in as tight as possible because the more they have, the more money that they're making. Um, they're fed meat byproducts considered unfit for human consumption. Water is provided to them through a nipple system, which often freezes and the water, um, can also fail because of human air. And they're not, you know, people aren't checking on them. They don't care if they have food or water, honestly, like as long as they're growing, so they're suffering in just unbelievable ways when they're just totally being bred to be some to be a coat for someone to wear when there's totally a million different other coats that you can have. Um, and the way that these animals are killed to get their fur is just beyond belief. It's just the most disgusting thing and trying to get through it without actually like tearing up is really hard just reading it. Um, they a lot of the animals wake up when they're being skinned. Um, they're, they have rods that are forced down their throat. Um, they're up, the forced up their rears. They're electrocuted painfully. They're, um, they, a lot of them suffer through genital electrocution, which is even deemed unacceptable by the Medi American Veterinary Medical Association, which I don't even know why that needs to be deemed Um to be unacceptable because it seems pretty ridiculous to me anyways. Um, some of them are poisoned. A lot of their necks are broken. 
Um, it's just, it's really ridiculous the amount of extremes that people go through to make sure the fur is okay. They have no regard to the animals at all. None at all. And with the wool industry, unlike the fur and leather industries, it could be humane. But as always, greed is playing a role and it's making it to where it's no longer a humane thing because sheep, sheep, their wool gets sheared regardless of what the people are doing with it. But um, the fact is, is the shearers, they get paid by volume. So they're shearing the wool as fast as they can to get as much wool off as they can. So they get paid more money. And the farmers who are raising the sheep, they're packing in the sheep as many as they can with the land that they have because they want to get the most money. So the sheep can't move around as well as they should. They're um, dying from malnutrition because there's not, they're not getting looked after like they should. So, you know, if they would downsize the amount of sheep they have and shear the wool correctly, then this would not be a big deal. Another thing that's happening is after the sheep are no longer good for their wool or, you know, they're getting too old or whatever, they live export them to places like China and North Africa where they are just disgustingly killed and that's probably where a lot of like sheep leather is coming from because they're in China and um, North Africa they're you know killing them and doing whatever they feel like because like we said there's no you know regulation for animals over there they barely I don't know it's just sad it's just really sad and it's it, when you think about it, like this isn't even at least for food. You're like, well, people have to eat. You do not have to wear fur. You do not have to wear leather. You know, you there are a million different things. Cotton is grown from the ground. Wear cotton. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Not only that, like Emily said, there's alternatives. Wear faux leather. You know, yeah. I mean, at least it's not. At least you're still getting the same leather that you always wear, that you always like to wear, but it's not real. It's not coming from these animals you know what i mean it's fake and it 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 makes you look better as a human being when somebody comes up to you and is like is that real you can be like no it's fake you know honestly yeah. i think fake leather looks better than real leather <laughs> yeah i mean um it's it's it all goes back to just like being aware of what you have because i was using a school bag for a really long time and i mean to me, it didn't look like it was real leather. I don't know why. I never, like, checked to see. But one day I looked on the inside and it said authentic leather exterior. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> so I immediately, like, I, th and this only happened, like, a month or so ago. So I immediately got a backpack because <clears throat> I just, I didn't want to do that. Um, and, like, you know, my mom always, whenever we go past the leather store, she's like, oh, I have to go in. It smells so good. And, like, I love my mom, but to me, that's like, ah, oh, dead cow. You know, like, it's, right. it's such a whole, like, why, like, I don't know. I don't understand how you would get excited about something like that. And it's really I, super strange how it becomes, like, that's like, it's cool, you know, like, it's cool or trendy to have, like, real leather or real fur. Like, how whoever thought that that's cool like cavemen did it because that's all they had but we have other alternatives right i have a leather i have a fake leather jacket and like what after doing all this research i was like i am so glad my leather my leather jacket is fake like, <laughs> i've never been so happy before in my life to have something that was fake <laughs> right yeah it's just so uh, i don't know and it's funny because i've no i've been noticing a lot um around like Instead of, like, faux leather, I've seen, like, vegan leather, which is just, it's funny how times are changing and vegans becoming a little bit more mainstream. So, it's all progress, but we just wanted to make you guys more aware, and um, down below, we're going to link a, a PETA, uh, it's kind of like a thing just to say that you're not going to wear fur, you know, just kind of hold you accountable a little bit to keep to your word. So be sure that if you want to go for free that you uh, go down below and uh, sign that pledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just remember that animals need their fur and they need their skin a lot more than we do. So just be conscious of that yeah. and just, just <laughs> see what you're wearing. And that these animals are basically, they're not being killed. They're not, the fur is not being taken after they are already lived this great, awesome life. Like, they're not living great lives at all. So that's another thing we wanted to bring to the, like, to the awareness is that these animals are not living the happy, carefree life that we always thought that they were.
So this week in Taiji, we had all but two days of Blue Cove, but on October 30th, um, there was a Red Cove with a pod of Riso Stolfin slaughtered, and November 3rd uh, was also a Red Cove with a pod of 15 Risos driven into the cove, um, 13 were slaughtered, and the first two of the season were taken into captivity. Um, so, again, we just want to remind you guys that we have the links to um, Sea Shepherd, Cove Guardians uh, live stream down below, so be sure you check those out because they're really important to watch. Um, and we also learned that a couple days ago, Sea Shepherds, Cove Guardians were harassed and chased in Taiji by nationalists that support the hunt. Um, for about a week, Cove Guardians received threats that these nationalists were planning to harass them. And on November 1st, uh, Japan time, uh, the Cove Guardians were threatened and chased even as they got into their car and drove away from the harbor. Um, meanwhile, the nationalists banged on the car window and threw objects at them. Um, eventually, they were able to drive to safety, but this just shows how sick um, the supporters of the hunt are and, you know, just the measures that they will take to keep the Cove Guardians away from the Cove. Um, and finally, a couple weeks ago, we brought you the news that Zimbabwe would not prosecute um, Cecil the Lion's killer, Walter Palmer. However, on November 2nd, the House of Representatives passed the Global Anti-Poaching Act, which is a law inspired by Cecil's death that will increase the penalties for wildlife traffickers, making them comparable to those faced by drug traffickers. So um, this is just one of the many efforts made to crack down on poaching, and obviously it will not bring Cecil back, but it seems to be a really big step in the right direction. This week's heartwarming story is about a three pound dog that saves her owner's life every day. Sixth grader Athen Bunger of Cincinnati, Ohio was diagnosed with type one diabetes at the age of five, uh, keeping his body from being able to regulate his sugar levels. Um, and according to his family, this almost cost him his life many times. And this is where JLo comes in. And no, we're not talking about the singer. Um, J-Lo is a three-pound papillion pup that Athens mother sought out from a group called Four Paws for Ability um, to help her son monitor his condition. Um, and Athen and J-Lo trained for six hours a day for almost two weeks to learn how to understand each other better and um, in order to successfully communicate. And amazingly, J-Lo's canine nose can detect when Athens' blood sugar drops too low or spikes too high and lets him know by licking his arm or tugging at his shirt. Um, and because of her amazing abilities, J-Lo goes everywhere with Athen, including school, which his classmates don't mind. Um, and I just think this is an amazing story and it really demonstrates how important animals are and how responsive they are to us. Um, and also we wanted to include a story to bring attention to Diabetes Awareness Month, which is this month. Um, so we will link the article down below and it gives more information about Four Paws for Ability and it also includes a video to watch JLo and Athens' amazing bond. For this week's do-it-yourself product of the week, we chose an avocado face mask. Basically, you take one ripe avocado, one ripe banana, one teaspoon of olive oil, and one teaspoon of lemon or orange juice. Combine the ingredients together, apply to your face after you've washed it, and leave on for about 10 to 15 minutes before removing it. Personally, I enjoyed this one more than the first one. Although, I don't think I would attempt it again because it was just a little too much for me. Uh, as most of you know, I am not a fan of certain things, and avocado is one of them. Certain things. Uh, while it served its purpose, it, shut up, okay. <laughs> in making my skin soft, I wouldn't go through all of this again to achieve this outcome. I am secretly hoping we can find a product that is humane and I like. We shall see, so stay tuned. Ladies, let me guess. You loved it. Well, I didn't love it. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I was close to loving it. Uh, it was, I felt like it was, 
I felt like it was really easy to do and I thought it smelled so good. Like to me it smelled like banana bread. I couldn't smell the avocado. Um, and I mean it was kind of weird to put on because it was, you know, like that texture still just like the first one but it was so much better than the first one in my opinion um it smelled a lot better you know I just I just felt like it did so much more for my skin and my skin is so soft so I mean I don't know if I would do it all the time but I I did really like it yeah I think it's like maybe a once a month thing but it like it, it's like a clay mask kind of thing you know like they I don't know that's the kind of texture and consistency that I thought of when I was doing it but it smells amazing this is probably my favorite face thing that we've done just because uh, the texture was a lot better and the, I don't know, the overall smell and outcome I thought was a lot better. So it's definitely one. If you've never tried anything that we've done on here, this is one to try because it is a good one. And Charlotte almost liked it. So you probably will too. Almost. (laughs) But uh, be sure to let us know if you try it and let us know what you think. And please give us suggestions of what you guys want to see us try down below because we're willing to take suggestions and we're willing to try new vegan things so let us know so this week uh dancing with the stars was an emotional roller coaster for me personally um the celebrities were each uh asked to choose like an icon or an inspirational person um and I was just gonna review those for you before we get through. Um, Alex chose Chris Kyle, who was the American sniper. In case you didn't know, um, Bindi chose Grace Kelly. Andy chose his mom. Nick chose his wife. Carlos chose Mark Anthony. Alexa chose David from the D- David and Goliath story in the Bible. And um, Tamar chose her sister Tony. So, what do you guys think about this week? Well, for me, I mean, the whole the whole week is, it always shows, it always makes me laugh when they say the dance-off, because I don't really feel like it's a dance-off. Um, <laughs> it's more like a two pairs just going side by side, and comparing who does better, and I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like the dance-off personally this year. Um, they've never had, like, America voting in the background with that whole thing, and that just, that distracted me, to be honest with you. <laughs> it did, yeah. That, lie it did it distracted me from the whole performance of everybody doing their actual dances um i appreciate that they wanted america america's involvement because usually we don't have a say in those types of things it's usually just the judges say and that's it but i did not get the whole voting process of this at all um i didn't get how they picked who won i didn't either Uh, i thought bindi and derek won but Alexa and Mark won or whatever, you know, whoever went against two, I, I don't Carlos, remember, but... Carlos and Whitney. Carlos and Whitney won. And then, like, uh, they made it seem like Derek and Bindi were cheating by saying, who wants Jive? Just trying to make it fair to everybody. Um, I mean, I guess I can see why some people would think that they were cheating, because obviously you're not supposed to say that, you know, <laughs> you're... It, you know, it's kind of obvious. You're not supposed to talk about any of that stuff beforehand. It's just all supposed to happen live on national TV right there and then. So I guess that's how some people could consider it cheating. But to me, it was they were trying to make it as fair as possible for everybody. Um, they wanted to have the person with the most compatib- compatibility in Jive to perform against and, you know, essentially be fair. So Carlos and Whitney were the ones who spoke up, and they wanted jive as well. So naturally, they um, they jive. But um, I was not impressed with Carlos and Whitney's dance this week. Um, I don't know why. I just did. It, it didn't bring me to that. I didn't have that moment. I, if I don't have that moment in a dance where I stop and I'm like, wow, that that brought me like something that gave me something that I don't that I don't you know like to dance. And Carlos and Whitney were one of those people this week, unfortunately. Um, I agreed with Carrie Ann on the initial salsa dance. It felt tight and it lacked that. It lacked the wow moment. So um, we're at, we're now on week seven. So judging in the competition, it's going to get so much uh, more stricter. It's going to all be top notch. They want to see the best of the best. There should have been more tens last night than there were um, at this point in the season. So. I was kind of a little disappointed in that. Um, Alec and Lindsay's contemporary performance was really good. 
Um, but like Julianne said, there needed to be more actual choreography in the dance and less lifts. Yeah, um, I hated their dance. I thought Austin awesome. went with the strong suit. Um, the strong suit was lifts, but um, I wasn't the dance. There needs to be dancing. It's dancing with the stars. It's not lifts with the stars. So <laughs> there needs to be more dancing. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alexa's performance, I had to sigh. I sighed so deeply and so sadly because as it, it was one of those performances where I'm like, I wish I wasn't a dancer because I knew right away she messed up. Right away. Right when I saw her and I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then they had to do the same move all the way around the dance floor to make up for the timing to get back into the position to make it so that they could finish off the rest of the dance. And I was just like, no, no. Because I knew she messed up. I knew it. And I was so sad because I really liked the whole dance, the entire dance. I loved it. And then, bam, she messed up. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <clears throat> I did not like Bindi and Derek's dance. Um, it's too over the top. They always have these extra performers in all of their dances. I'm getting tired of that. They need to dumb down her production a little bit more. Um, it's just too, it's getting too much. They're overdoing her too much now. And, and now it's starting to get to me. And it's really like, it's to a point now where it's like, you guys need to chill with everything else. Just dance. Just put on your performance and dance. We don't need any of this other crap. We don't need all these extra performers on the floor. We don't need any of it. Just give me Bindi and Derek, and that's all I want. I did not find Tamar's remarks last week offensive at all. In the least bit whatsoever. I saw them for what they really were. Her building her own confidence up for her own self, not anything else. And I even said that, I believe, in last week's episode. Um... What made me mad was that they tried to pull that over-the-top thing and make her feel bad for it, and then it kind of affected her all week. And that made me mad because she has every right to build herself up. She has every right to say, I feel like I'm the best dancer in the competition. She has every right to do that because she is one of the best dancers in the competition. Um, <clears throat> Val is an amazing choreographer, and, and together they have this chemistry on the floor that's undeniable. Um, last night's performance, I mean, Monday night's performance was, it was a paso, and, um, for me, I, you guys always know I look for the hardness in the paso, um, if you're not hard and the posture's not there, I, it's not a paso to me, and she did laugh at in the paso a little bit, she wasn't as hard as she usually is in her frame, and they even said that in the judges' remarks, but, uh, again, she has the potential to make that paso hard. She has the potential to make it a 10-worthy performance. And I think that she got a little bit too much in her head this week and that those remarks from last week kind of affected her. And that made me mad. <clears throat> Nick and Sharna were obviously the best of the night. They got the perfect score. Um, he pretty much had the picturesque night of everybody. Um, not only did he get a perfect score... He did not have to face elimination or the dance-off, and um, he found out he was having a boy. So A backstreet boy. He had, he had like, the, be the best night out of everybody, so you can't knock him for anything. His performance was top-notch. I have no, no critiques for him. I was happy with everything that he did. Um, Andy and Allison, they danced the Viennese waltz, and I was sad to see them go. But uh, to be honest, every time they danced, I always got so nervous for Allison, knowing that she was pregnant. Um, it always, you know, even with like little lips and just little things that they did in some of their dances, I was like, oh. So, um, but I, his performance was one of those performances that made me cry. Um, it was to his mom. And just, I, I feel like it was his week. This was his week because he dedicated that last dance to his mom. And it was just so heartfelt and so emotional, and I was, um, again, sad to see him go, but I was glad that he went out on kind of a top, you know, top note for himself. Um, and like I said earlier, I was not a fan of the dance-off. Um, I did not get the whole concept. Uh, I don't know how you guys felt about it, but it just didn't make any sense to me, so. 
So for me, um, I actually, I liked Carlos's dance because I love Whitney and I love her choreography. So that aspect I did like. Um, with Bindi, I do agree with you that it was a little over the top, especially when they were all laying on the floor. I think their legs got like, uh, they, I, I don't know. He did that part right. I think he, he did was, it. And the they were, they were like crap. hitting each other. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I do, I do agree with you on that. Um, Nick uh, was definitely one of my favorites. I absolutely loved his dance. I thought it was very emotional, very, very good, deserving of a ten, of all tens for sure. Um, and I loved the reveal that they did. Uh, when I worked at Party City, which is a party supply store, I actually got to do a reveal. And, like, to know the, the sex of someone's baby before they even know is, like, the craziest thing ever. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so that was really cool. I liked that. Um, with Alexa, again, you know, I was disappointed that she messed up. The thing with Alexa, though, is that I did not like her song choice. Like, I love that song, but... I don't know. I'm again. I'm not a dancer, but I. It to me, it looked um, like kind of broken. I don't know. It didn't seem like it flowed as well as some of the other choices. Like I thought, Bindi's song choice was good. I thought Nick and Andy's song choices were really good. I didn't really like Alec the song choice for Alexa. Um, but you know, besides that little slip up, I think she did really well. Um, for Andy, I was I was very disappointed with what the judges said. Um, again, I'm not a dancer, but I think it was absolutely beautiful, and I think it flowed together really well. And I thought that they were too hard on him, and I actually, I knew he was going to go before I watched it. So when Julianne was like, if you're here next week, I was like... <laughs> But I don't know, I just, I feel so sad that they were so hard on him the, the, the night that he went home. Because um, I, like, it made me emotional. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And, you know, part of me also kind of wonders if it was slightly sabotage because Allison is pregnant. So, you know, I always wonder that. I never trust competition shows. I never trust if the bottom two is actually the bottom two. But, you know, I was sad to see him go, but I agree with Charlotte that he did go out on a personal high for him, even though the judges didn't like his performance. I loved it. Um, Alec, I feel like it could have been good um, if he if he didn't mess up, like, that little that little part, even though he did kind of catch her. I was like, oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> that wasn't his fault. Like I said, her toe was yeah. his collar. And it's right. like, like, no... He can't control that. He, but he did almost, almost miss her when he, when he kind of like caught her. He almost missed her. I thought right. that too. Yeah. So that kind of, that kind of made me like, Ugh. but I mean, I always try to separate the dancer, like the, the way someone dances from their personal attitude. But he is the only one that I just, I cannot like. I just, I really, I really cannot like. And you know, I try my hardest to just focus on his dances because he is improving. But I don't know. I just with him. Um, Tamar's I felt was also good and I agree with you that they're being like totally over exaggerated with her and I think that she should have that confidence so those are the ones that I think and I also didn't like the um, the dance off because I did feel that Bindi and Derek won otherwise I agreed with the winners but it was just a weird setup and I don't understand how the points worked so yeah, they, they didn't really explain that to us which I think is something that needed to be done so we could understand how we knew who won. Right. But I just, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of glad that they lost because on, to me, it just seems like it's like Bindi and the stars. Like, <laughs> it just seems like that they're, the whole competition is just like, they're just trying to wrap it around Bindi and it's just driving me nuts. Um, I, I didn't like their, I like the dance, but I don't like the production factor either. It just, it's just getting over the top and I'd feel bad for Bindi because they showed her feet on TV and I'm sure that half of those people's feet look like that, but like, <laughs> yeah, man. that's, this was life right there. I yeah. Mean, and like, like her face, she was like, just like, oh my gosh, my feet. So like, yeah, I, they did not need to show that to America. Yeah, twice. They showed it twice. Yeah, of course. They kept showing it too and then they like freeze it on the TV and I'm like, we don't need to see this, people. And, oh, and another thing with her is when they were doing that feet thing, she totally messed that whole entire thing up. That whole thing was not right and not one judge said a thing about it. Not one. And it was clearly messed up. So that really irked me. Unless they can't see. I don't know if they get that well, overhead shot or not. But, but yeah. 
Oh, that drove me nuts because she totally messed up. If she, if they would have got a perfect score, I would have freaked out because she totally messed that whole thing up. And they pick on everyone else for little things. Um, Alexa, I was so sad she messed up, and I don't like. I rarely notice some of the like critical things, but I noticed right away, and I was like, no. But I like total props for her for choosing David from David and Goliath and putting herself out there because at a time when Christians are kind of getting like really pushed down on in this country for her to be so open about her faith. It just, it's really, really inspiring to me. And I just love her. And Alice Stance, I thought was just really dumb. The choreography was just really dumb. It was just like him, like picking her up and like her, like floating around. And like, I don't know. I just thought it was like the dumbest dance I ever saw in my life. So and it had nothing. It, the dance itself had nothing to do with Chris Kyle. No, like it was literally like, unless Chris was supposed to be, she was an angel. I don't know. Like, I just thought it was really dumb. I thought it was just really dumb. And I felt bad for him because, like, literally it didn't show he could dance at all. It just showed that he was strong. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, Andy's was just so sweet, and it made me, his package made me cry. And then the dance was just beautiful and um, just amazingly choreographed. And I do think the judges were super hard on him. But, I mean, like you said, you never know. Sabotage, whatever. Um because I feel like with all reality TV, it's not really reality. Oh, it's not really reality. We, yeah. we all found that out a long time ago. So that was really sad. But Nick, oh my gosh, his package made me cry. And he, like, I love him even more now. The dance was flawlessly amazing. And he is just the sweetest man ever. And I'm so happy for him and his wife and that they're having a boy. And uh, I was just. I was so happy with his dance. Like, after his package, like, I was just so emotional. And then that dance, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, his wife is, like, the luckiest wife alive. Like, <laughs> it was just so good. It was so good and beautiful. Aww. And uh, I just, I really love him. I really think that he's going to be one of the ones in the finale. He's just a super good dancer. And, uh, and he has a good partner. I mean, we can't, we can't stop that because, obviously, if they're not yeah, Sean, Sean has all, always made it. She's always made it towards the end, but she's never won, I don't think. I don't think no, she's I ever. hope that this is their year because I think they deserve it. But we shall see what happens next. You never know. But I guess this week was it was a really interesting week, I thought. And I thought the dance off was so dumb. So, other than the dance <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. If you're going to do it, then don't have America voting with it. Just have the judges do it like you always did yeah. every year. Because it's having it's hard. Too made it way too confusing, and no one understood the whole voting process. Yeah, I mean, a dance-off is where one person dances, and then they stop, and then the other person comes in and dances. You have to look at two people dancing at the same time and this bar going back and forth in the background. It's just super distracting. Yeah, I I don't even remember. Like, I remember the worm. I felt the extent. <laughs> and that was at the very end of, like, the whole dance-off thing with Annie and Alec was the worm. Neither one of them had done the samba in competition yet before, so it was kind of like everybody had a leading edge on them because neither one of them had... I mean, at least they were both evenly matched, I guess, because neither one of them had done it, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah. Again, it made me mad, and I didn't get... I didn't get the voting system, so... Um, but yeah, so tune in next week and find out, uh, what happens, who got eliminated, who's going to make it towards, cause we're getting towards the end. So we're getting towards the finals. Who you got, who do you guys think is going to be in the final four? We want to know. So, um, let us know, comment down below and, um, share with your friends. Tell us, come on, we want your news. So, in part because the CMAs were this week, and also because her album Storyteller was just recently released, this week's Song of the Week is Carrie Underwood's Renegade Runaway. Um, Carrie rose to fame in 2005 when she won American Idol and has been a top name in country music ever since, even regularly hosting the CMAs with Brad Paisley. Um, starting out on a farm in Dakota, Oklahoma, Carrie is a huge animal lover and a vegan, um, so a perfect artist to feature on our show. And this song from her new album is upbeat and powerful with a sultry beginning and strong chorus signature to Carrie. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an official video yet, but we will link the official audio down below. So what did we think of this week's pick? 
Um, I love Carrie. I have loved her since her audition for American Idol, and I have people who can vouch for me for that. Like, I remember we were sitting down in the basement watching it, and Carrie auditioned, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love her, and like, I've loved her ever since. Um, and I love her whole new album. It's super good. And this song, I think, is really good. It's upbeat. It's um, good. And I actually can work out to it, which people think I work out to weird things. But <laughs> I really love it. It's not her normal, like, power ballads, which are my favorite things. Like, I say all the time, like, ballads are just my favorite. But yeah, I do like it's a little it. Different. And it's kind of like a, you know, like a girl kind of, I don't know. Every A lot of it is just about girl power. So I just, you know, like, girls being in control and... You know, and it's mysterious, and I know I really love it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I like the shoot because it was about like women empowerment and just like being, you know, being okay with who you are and not giving crap what anybody else thinks and just you know going with your own flow. And that's really why I wanted to feature it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and my yeah, I've loved Carrie for a long time. Um, ever since American Idol, and, you know, I, I wanted her to win so bad, I voted for her 50 times, I thought that was a, such a big number, <laughs> and so, um, I saw her the first time at the American Idol's tour, um, they came out after the concert, and I met her, and I was like, I voted for you 50 times, <laughs> but I, her. I was so, I was like, I was surprised how tiny she was, she's so tiny, but she's really sweet, um, and then I met her again at the Dixon Mayfair, um, where she did a concert. So I've met her a couple times. She's really sweet and I've always supported her because I really respect her as a person and as an artist and yeah. I really I really like this song a lot. I think that's like one of my major things is like I cannot support people or like like their music if I think they're a crappy person and she's just the best kind of people. She's the mm -hmm. best kind of people and I think that's why I love everything that she does even more than just because it's awesome. Yeah. So like we said, um, there is no video yet, but there may be soon, but we will link the audio down below. And also be sure to listen to her entire album, purchase it on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Okay, guys, that's our show. We hope you've enjoyed this installment of Through the Screen. If you did, be sure to like down below and also subscribe to the channel. We also appreciate any feedback you may have. We post new videos every week, and we would love for you all to join us and tell your friends. Next week, we will be celebrating the many veterans who serve to keep us free and safe and how we can support those who are returning from war. So you won't want to miss that. Until then, thanks for watching, stay informed, and we'll see you next time.